Hey, welcome back to YNR Update. It's Paul. I want to jump into an interview done by Michael Logan. It was a two-part interview with Jill Farron Phelps and Chuck Pratt. Another thing that just floored me in the interview is when they asked, you know, Chuck Pratt what he thought about Eric Braden doing these bits, like the doppelganger bit and whatnot. You talk about how you went to him and you asked him if the storyline was okay, but what did you do? He said, hey, not only is he okay with it, but he and I are starting to become best friends. You actually call it best friends. Do you really think that you and Eric Braden are best friends? What? Riddle me this, when you're not the showrunner of this show, get back to me and let me know how many times Eric Braden has you over for drinks or to meet his family or to hang out. You're not best friends, you're his boss, okay? And he's, and you're just new. And he does not want to fight with you. I'm not trying to speak for this guy, but if you think that Eric Braden is your best friend, Go ask all the other showrunners that come by if they remain in close contact with them. Because, honestly, I'll, I will bet on it that you're wrong. The other thing that <laughs> floored me was when Chuck Pratt talked about the idea of putting, um, and, and strongly thought of the idea of putting Nikki and Neil together at game. I mean, that to me just shows that you haven't watched the show. These characters over the last 30 years, and 30 years plus in, in the case of uh, Nikki's character, have developed characters. And those characters have followed, you know, different uh, showrunners and they've changed marginally, but not whole scale. To put these two characters together means you haven't really seen the show and you don't really know what these characters are. It's not that anyone has a problem with them being together, it just doesn't fit and it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. It just means that you're just tinkering. And I hope to God that you don't go ahead with the storyline. It's one thing for two people to have uh, the disease of, of alcoholism, but to throw them together, two characters that no one would see together is another thing. And the alcoholism thing gets me going on another thing. You using um, the bipolarism, you're using alcoholism, and it really seems like you don't have a grasp of it. Alcohol, alcoholism is a struggle, and if you know the character of Nikki, she's had that disease for a long time, and Neil's had the disease for a long time. So you use that disease to what? To kill an unborn child? I mean, that was, this is ridiculous. And then you made it look like, in Neil's case, like, you know, you reference it every now and then, but right after the accident, it just stopped. They didn't have another drink, and these guys were drinking heavily. So now you're sort of meandering back to it. And what it shows me is that you don't really have a grip on on what alcoholism really is. There were, you know, there's meetings. There's things that alcoholics have to go through, especially if one has been charged uh, with with a serious crime. And I, I don't think those are really being addressed. And as far as bipolarism, you're using that as a just a hot button. Every time you want Sharon to do something, I mean, uh, you literally had Mariah in, an, in one scene give her her meds because she was she was acting in a weird way when she came to the bar. I mean, seriously, it's not that simple. You don't really have a grasp of the disease and it seems to get thrown away and pulled back whenever needed. I remember uh, they gave Nikki MS. Where's that? You, I heard it referenced uh, in your tenure probably twice. Where is that disease? If, you're, if people are going to give a character a disease like MS, then it's part of their character. It's not something you could toss away and bring back at certain times, especially when you mix that with drinking, but no one really seems to, to want to do that. And for people that, that are out there that watch the show, it doesn't ring true. And, uh, you know, that's just my theory on it. I'd love to hear what other people think about it. Um, and people that are suffering with any of the diseases that I've mentioned, I honestly think the fans uh, feel let down by the current regime. I feel that they these people haven't done enough research into the characters. It feels like the characters are being rewritten in the image they like. On the other day I saw Victor with a syringe um, and he was going to actually, you know, stick that in fake Jack's IV. If you know Victor Newman, that is not a thing he would do. He never gets his hands dirty. That's his thing. And he doesn't commit capital crimes. But yet you had him doing that until what, Gabe walked in? And then you had him give him some flimsy excuses to the fact that the, the syringe was on the floor and he was picking it up? Come on, seriously? Like, you, you're, you're putting this out there, but you want us to believe it. And I don't know if you wrote it or one of your writers did, but it, it went by your desk and it's a joke. And anyone that knows the character of Victor Newman thinks you're just, it's, it's horrible. The other day you had Victor apologizing. Okay, he was apologizing to Chelsea. 
uh, for Vicky's behavior and for the fact that he let her walk. It doesn't happen. It's not a Victor Newman thing. You really should study the character that you say is uh, your best friend, or at least the real Eric Braden is your best friend. If he's your best friend or you're becoming best friends, you go ask him if his character over the last you know 30 plus years would do any of the things that you're having him do right now. You're you're changing the characters into the mindset you see for them. And the other thing that is so disturbing is now all these characters want to fight. I mean, between Joe and Dylan and Billy and Neil and Kyle, everybody's throwing punches. It's, it, it looks like you're going for a cheap gimmick and people are fired up about it because they've been watching it longer than you have and they've invested a lot of emotion in it because it is entertainment and they reserve the right to after all these years but they feel that what they've watched is being ripped apart and you don't have any respect for them and when they voice their opinions you're both both Phelps and Pratt are quick to dismiss it is just you know crazy people online who sit around in their living room well a lot of those people um, like myself have jobs have lives you know some people don't have jobs it's not a shot at them but don't dismiss it's really easy to do but if you're just dismissing as a bunch of people, you know, sitting around uh, in their robes watching this because they have nothing to do and they're sitting around collecting a check, you're wrong. A lot of people have watched this for a long time and they care about the show. That's all I have to say on this, but uh, I'd love your feedback. Thanks for checking it out. It's YNR Update and I'm Paul. Have a great day.